sure it is getting it. Yes, it is. Okay, first thing, gonna go start the reassembly process. You'll need uh, your two little screws, your left and your right cartridge guides. There's two of them, one and two. Your carrier spring and its screw, as well as the screw and the um, for the spring cover, you'll need it too. That'll go in last. Okay. First things first, I just had my darn tweezers. There they are. The um, This is your carrier spring. You're going to put it into the center groove and make sure it is in there so that you can get the screw to that little hook. But you can see it down in there. There's your spring and it's that center groove and the little hook is right over the hole for the screw to go in. Get the appropriate size bit in your screwdriver. Make sure it is centered and a magnetic tip is a wonderful thing, I can promise you. And then simply drop it down in there and gently start your screw. If it doesn't gently, I mean, doesn't if it's snagging or anything, then you may be cross-threaded. Be careful, do not cross-thread it. Everything seems to be aligned. Yep. And then just put a nice little quarter-turn torque on it. Don't have to go crazy. <clears throat> Let's put the first cartridge guide in will be on the left side this is easy to break I am here to tell you I did it the first time I ever tried to disassemble one of these rifles there is a left side there is a right side once you get it lined up with the hole take one of your screws and finger start it and when you're tightening this little bastard down you got to be very careful because you can if it's not in a groove correctly you can snap it now I'm just gonna turn it a little bit if I think nope wrong one I'm gonna use it in my fingers It's one good thing about the way this rifle's designed, there's no two screws really will work in any other spot. The head's too big or whatever the case may be. This in here will be recessed into the receiver so only it will fit in the damn hole. And before I torque it down, I'll lay the rifle over and look. Yeah, looks like it is in its seat. Then I'm going to give it a gentle snugging. I'm not going to go crazy because that damn little bar will snap pretty as you please. So there it is. It's um, got some tension so I'm going to turn it about a quarter of a turn. That is it where my slot is up and down. You can see it's already been boogered up anyway but let us not booger it up further. So we got that one. The other guide will go in here the opposite direction like that and make sure I got that crud out of that because I want it clean and I'd set this one aside so that I would not break it or get it confused right there is the dam I reckon I'll have to lay it on its side. And... Alright, you bastard. Alright. Right about there. And my hole, yep. Right about there. My hole is lined up. 
can see it down in there. My hole lined up. Take my bit back out of my screwdriver so I can do it with my fingers very gently. And it was sticking just a tiny bit. So I'm going to turn it backwards and try again. And it went in just as smooth as it could be. Smooth as it can be. Again, check, make sure it is in its slot. It is lined up. Can you see that? You got your little groove there, your little groove there. They are lined up. Now we'll put a slight torque on it. We're not going to go crazy. It's very easy to break these damn things. This may not go straight. Like I said, I'm not going to go crazy with it. If it's snug, it's snug. That's good he freaking enough. Wipe my fingers off. This thing has got pitting all over the damn place. So we got that. The next thing is to install the spring gate and this is the brand new part I just purchased could not find a blue part so we're going to go with it Maybe buff it up a little bit before I put it in there it'd be easier to do it <clears throat> I'll do that <clears throat> loading gate it is spring loaded and your little screw that goes in and through it to hold it. Now this is a steel part that has been brass colored. It is not a brass part. It's spring steel. And I gotta get it into the groove. <clears throat> Let me roll it over and see. I guess it sits flat and flush right there. It doesn't really, Oop, if I turn it around the right way, put it right in its hole. Oh, it, it does have a damn groove. I see it now. Okay, so I'm blind in one eye, and I cannot see out the damn other eye. Ah, uh, 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 I'm trying to line up on the wrong damn holes, what the problem is. Once I get it, and see then the front here has got to be just in it. I got that. A screwdriver bit. Finger. Using finger pressure only. That way we can ensure it's not being damaged. We're not cross-threading it. Because if it's crossed there, you're not going to turn that too easy. Again, we're going to do about a quarter turn. So I want it standing straight up and down. Well, that's still a little loose. Maybe another quarter to where it is parallel. Well, look at there. That's more battle. So they got that assembled. Okay, I've got, we're going to do the uh, lower tang. I've already got the strain screw in there. The next thing will be the trigger itself. And you're going to use a punch to get it all lined up. Let me see if I can see through the freaking hole here. Alright, there's the hole. Put a punch through it. Let's get a bigger punch. Okay, now the sear is next. And it will be oriented so that the sharp end, which is your sear, the actual working surface, is toward the rear. Yeah, that is correct. 
double checking, making sure this is, uh, like I said early in the video, um, I haven't touched one of these in a lot of years, and I'm using a pair of tweezers, tweezers can be your best friend sometimes to get it all put in there, just gentle pressure. Once I have the punch all the way out of the way, there we go. Now I just work it right back through. Mm -hmm. There we go. Now all your parts are aligned. Got to get the pin. Okay, just going to pull that out a little at a time. And that, I think that's the beveled end of it. They should both be beveled, but one end's generally more beveled. And what we're going to do is start driving it in. So I find my damn hammer here. And allow it to push the punch out. So light, light pressure on that punch. So it keeps everything aligned up. As it pushes that punch out. And that last tiny bitty bit... See, where's my damn punch? There's my darn punch. Lay it over here so it's not bouncing around. Right, slightly. Oop. I had it flush on the other side, but I had it coming out just a tiny bit on the other side. We want both sides actually recessed just a tiny bit. Nothing's barely recessed. That one's dead on the money. All right, got that part. You stop bar. Okay, that's what it looks like. Already thoroughly cleaned it. Uh, let's tell you what, drop that in there. This peg goes in that hole, and the hook in, the fly crazy end goes in there that way, and then your spring goes in here like that. Okay, so you'll take the small, I think it's a one, uh, one sixteenth of an inch punch, and you'll press the spring down and align it with your, your hole over there, and work your stop bar until you can get your punch all the way through, okay? And we're going to pull it out until it just is recessed in there, but not all the way out of it. So we can take our next pin and drive it in to hold everything down you want this correct over the uh, spring not under the spring and the reason why that's what gives it its tension it's pressing it down all right let me see nope see I pulled it out too far well maybe not I did have it in far enough but I want to recess it slightly I wish I had the holder punch that this guy that I'm watching has. It would make this portion of it much easier to get this damn thing started. Okay, it's a little crooked. It's got it captured. I'll watch it. Apparently not.
Oops. And that damn bar popped out. Out from under it. Oh, it must be hitting that damn leg. Okay. Let me try this again. Run it back out just a touch so that I may need to go with a bigger punch so it actually holds it down equally where there it is. Yeah, that one was a very it's a nice snug fit. Make sure that off. You know, that's the thing. You watch me screw up a little bit. Maybe in your own endeavors, you will not. And it won't be such a pain in the damn neck. Come on. All right, I got that leg. I was, what it was doing is pushing it around a little bit. We do not want it to push it around any at all. Now... Let's do it again. Just gentle pressure to keep it from spoiling out of there as you drive it out. And see there, I should be able to slow that down and show you guys. And it's just slightly raised. So we're going to take our punch and just tap it. You want an alignment as pretty as possible. And don't worry about that marking. That's the bronze or the brass or the hammer. Let me make sure now. Uh, that's uh, it's real close, but it needs to be recessed a tiny bit more. Flush, but it went to a tiny. I want it equal distance. Yeah, that's close enough. Government work. All right. So now we're going to put the mainspring on. You have your mainspring base. You have the mainspring itself. You see a wear pattern here, and the wear pattern there. We're about to fix that. Because this part of the gun rarely ever sees daylight, I'm going to just put a damn real thin coat of grease on everything just to keep it from rusting. And especially right there where that, that spot is. Just as a, a preventative, because all oil does is dry out, period. I mean, truly, that's all it does. Either it that or it'll run all over the damn place. I just leave it laying on its side until I get the mainspring itself done. Same deal. Just a light spot of grease. Seal it off from air so it doesn't rust. As oil, I mean, oil is useless. It is. I mean, it is good where it's good, but it ain't worth a flip where it ain't worth a flip. But definitely a good gob right in here. Now you want this oriented, the neck portion sticking up. This one sitting right on top of it. Align your holes. Take your freaking screw. Fingers start it. Everything in alignment. And screwdriver. All right, I need to snug it just a tiny bit. Get in the slot, you bastard. Uh, kicked out, but. There we go. 
So there you go. And now this hole here is going to be for your, your stock. I mean, that's what screws in on this damn stock. All right. And while I'm at it, this gun may not ever come back apart. I don't doubt it. I just don't know what Alvin's got in plan, my buddy Alvin. Um, but I know one thing, I'm tired of people taking advantage of him, and I won't be the one. I'm going to make sure this damn thing's right as rain as I can make it. That, oof. I never wiped that dude out. I just saw that. See? Look at that. Crud. Now, a little bit of grease. And you grease, you see where that shiny spot is there? That is the obvious wear pattern, bigger than crap. Any shiny area like that, that is a high wear item. Or area, I should say, not item, but area. This is uh, Mystic JT6, high temp grease that our company sells. And I'd use JT6 uh, multi-purpose grease, which is not high temp grease. On my fifth wheel on my truck for years, when I could find it, it was so damn tacky. It did such a great job. I loved it and couldn't find a distributor for uh, it in my town where I lived. And damn if I didn't get a job with a distributor. So uh, this number one selling stuff we have. Okay, so this is the finger lever and this is the housing. And it's supposed to be in there that way. And that slot is there and you just drive the pin in. Now what I had done earlier is turned the damn thing around. I had it backwards, but... It's easy enough to drive back out and drive it back in. A non-marring hammer is a good idea to use on that portion. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see some weird crap in this section of video. As a matter of fact, the next two or three sections because somehow or another, I did not hit the record or turn the camera off and was recording stuff I wasn't intending to record. Anywho, I'm going to... It, I reversed the video, so there's no audio. I'm having to do this on a separate track to try to do this. But the that's the breech block that stops the uh, bolt from blowing out and killing you. And you can see it looks like I am uh, driving a pin in when actually I was driving it out. <laughs> okay, so the flat side of that that doesn't have the two little ears the uh, little tiny short firing pin, the second firing pin, rear firing pin, is has the beveled edge of it facing the flat portion of the uh, breech block. And all you have to do is drive the pin out. And of course I will grease it, not the firing pin itself, only the, the um, load bearing surfaces of it. But yeah, and when we get down to the uh, bolt, you will also see it will be a nightmare because I had to reverse it also. So this is that little link I was talking about. This is called the rear firing pin. Another wonderful little thing is learning all the parts of the names. I mean the name parts. Uh, the part name how about that um for everything and understanding how it is used and what its uh function is in the gun to help you understand your weapon a whole lot damn better than you would otherwise there you go rear firing pin okay bolt reassembly in reverse because as i stated in the other section uh, somehow or another i screwed up the camera and that's the strip bolt. The first thing I'm going to put in is the extractor, which is held in by two roll pins. It was gobbed up and gooed up. And there is the extractor. It goes on the top of the bolt. You can see it with the bolt installed in the rifle. Because it's directly, see how it flipped through there? <laughs> that was when I was popping it out and it was stuck and it spoiling. So, like I said, you'll see some weird crap going on, but all it is is I could not 
I did not hit the record button or I had it recording when I was tinkering around doing other stuff and I when I hit it again it shut the camera off I did not get that video so you'll you know put the uh, extractor in line up your holes and then just drive in your two roll pins ensuring and I believe this is a three thirty seconds but you know you can see um, but um, yeah, when I was driving out, y'all remember I jugged uh, my darn block. It was fun times, I'm here to tell you. Thank God for this editing program because uh, I already gave the rifle back to my friend. And um, it's been over a week ago. But yeah, all you're doing is put it in, line up your holes, drive in your pins. I mean, that's fairly simple on the extractor. The other thing is you have to have your ejector, and I think that's in the next video clip, oriented correctly. I had a hell of a time with it because I wasn't, my brain wouldn't say, hey, flip the damn thing over and try it the other direction. And uh, could not get it to uh, line up to save my life. And finally, I did. So take note of how the orientation is of all your parts and if you're doing this for the, you have a smartphone, take photographs before you disassemble it. Okay, and there it is, the bolt, breech bolt facing. My thumb is pressing down on the extractor, so you can see it. And the ejector, my index finger is on it. So you look at the orientation and how it is aligned. There's the ejector or the extractor that I was pointing to, and now. Look at the orientation of both the firing pin and how it will be oriented in the, the bolt, as well as the ejector at the bottom. That ejector was a real pain in the freaking neck. But basically all you're doing is lining up the parts the way they came off and um, I don't know why I had to go through such a long-winded BS. Do not oil your freaking firing pin. Do not. Do not grease it. If you just cannot get away, you gotta, gotta, gotta have some type of lubrication. Use graphite. Where you, where can you get graphite? Number two, quote unquote, lead pencil, which is not actually lead. It is graphite, and that is a wonderful dry lubricant that will not seize or anything else. Problem is, is it does come off, but I wouldn't just, they always say put it in dry. The tunnel it's in should be dry. The firing pin itself should be dry and so forth. But um, everything else, I grease as always, um, where the surfaces that are gonna be riding inside the receivers, um, you know, the slots in the receiver, those I always grease and yeah, it's a little tacky and it's a little, you know, it feels like a brand new rifle when you got that tacky grease in there. But look at the orientation of the, the ejector at the bottom of the bolt next to my left thumb. That's all that's right. The correct put the breech bolt into the rifle. And because this is a has a milled track. On both sides of it, of course, you know I'm going to stick some grease in there. Just using a Q-tip. Let me see. You know what? I should have done this. Um, while it was still taken completely apart, but it ain't no big deal. Once I'm done, of course... All these slots in here where the locking block goes up and down and the bolt rides back and forth, they are going to have a very thin layer of grease. It may look excessive, but I promise you it is not. All excess will be wiped off. Now, 
the breech bolt. We already got it assembled. Did it on the video. Maybe we got it in the correct order. Uh, the firing pin, the slot in it, has to align with this slot here. Okay, there's a long slot and a short one. This will align with that. This long slot will align with that. And what happens there is you got that that cut off at the rear that okay and again we're going to add just a tiny bit of grease on the rails so that actually will freaking slide and not destroy the damn rifle over time you see that that shiny spot there get that crap off of there because of this high temp grease it's not going to run very easily so don't have to worry about it gumming up the damn action the, like I said earlier firing pin should be dry going in period do not oil a damn firing pin on anything slide that baby home hey, tabs to the rear Yes, grease wants to smoothly work in those little slots, little grease. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody thinks I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, it works. Boom. In order for it to go all the way in, it's not knocking shit off. You have to press in on it as you push the bolt forward. And there it is. Put the lower tang in now. All the other stuff is in its proper place. And you'll need to compress this spring that I took all that time to put all that damn grease on in order to get it to go into its slots. And there it goes. Okay. And it still move a little bitty bit. Now, grease that sucker up around the sides of the hammer, not up here, only on the sides where it pivots. Okay, only there. And then it will go back there. I'm getting out of the camera. I got the now well, let me do it on camera. Pushing it in to that slot that's in there, that open hole, ahead of that spring, getting it oriented correctly. Now press the spring down. Everything lined up. Here's a hammer. Right. 
to start that to keep it from moving. I had more room to do all this with. It would be so much nicer. But I do not. Looks easy when somebody else is doing it, but when you get started to doing it yourself, it's not so damn easy. So if I can use this other screw as a pin, I guess not. Got that. Wiggling, jiggling. Do not want to damage those damn threads. That would sh suck. It is not lining up for some reason or another. Okay, so use this punch here, and it is a one eighth. Put it through, got everything lined up as I drove it through with the, you know, basically using the rifle weight to press against it as I was working everything. Got everything aligned and then I used the screw itself to press, push it back out. So now let's see if we can get this thing to, oof, there, I should have taped the damn receiver up. Even though it's already buggered up. Use my fingers to guide. Hopefully everything will work its way through without damaging the threads. It's feeling good. It's going down. That's what I'm talking about. Then we got to check it to make sure everything's cocking like it should and so forth. We got a lot of snow here today. It's a quit, but it's not warm enough to keep it around. And this is still going to pivot until you get the stock back here, so y'all don't be freaking. Got to press that up. There you go. You got your half cock and your um, full cock. Press it again. And it does drop. Whew. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, we're about to install the carrier. And this is what will carry the cartridge up in front of the bolt face as the bolt pushes it off. Okay? And so this is the proper orientation, the duck beak down, and basically you're going to just shove it in the hole with the uh, left side of the rifle facing up, and then take the screw, and there, I was about to screw up, I want some grease on in that damn hole, of course. And it's not so damn easy on here, so get it lined up, and I'm going to take the damn screw and put some grease on it. The threads on this screw are at the neck, right under the head of the screw. There are the threads, so it's more of a pin. It'll help you line it right up. Okay. It does move freely, and if I can ever get my damn screwdriver to work, 
want to turn it in, snug it, and then you want to check for play. Make sure you got, I mean, it, it's turning freely, moving up and down freely, I should say. All right. And it is. thing is the finger lever, in other words, the cocking mechanism. You'll need the uh, main screw for it that holds it into the receiver, the pin that connects this to the bolt, and the stop pin screw that goes in from the other side. First things first, cock the hammer. All the way. Press your locking block down about halfway-ish. Move your bolt about halfway back. Okay, this part here is what you call the beak. It will go into a corresponding slot in the carrier right here. Push it in. And right here, the uh, locking block goes into a slot at the rear. I don't know how well the camera's picking that up, of the trigger group. Okay. So you'll line that up and push it back. Okay, you'll push the carrier up out of the way into the receiver. And this is going to take some wiggling and jiggling, but everything. Oop, I went too damn far. And I don't have the. Okay, making sure this damn thing's recording. Battery went dead. Okay, let's take it back apart so you can see what I did. Well, with everything is still not in there, it's going to be a damn pain in the neck. Anywho, when you're putting the uh, locking block the back of the housing here onto the locking block you got to make sure that duck bill is up in there and corresponds with a slot that's on the bolt you can see it's hooked in it now okay so you hook that well i don't got it out meanwhile you're trying to get the i mean this is <laughs> is a lot to do All right, got that. Press the front down. And there you go. It's a pain in the damn a neck. All right, so then you put this screw in. And I'm just going to finger tighten it for this minute. Get it started good. And, uh... Then I'm going to put my pin in. Ties the lever and the finger lever. The lever, the finger lever here. You got to line them damn holes up. But it, line, it gets all that squared away. And you put this screw in to prevent it from backing back out. You bastard. Yup, 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 yup. Definitely need to do this about 50 times before I get anywhere in the neighborhood good enough to do it professionally. Alright. Good enough. Alright, that works. Half cock works. Full cock works. The little locking bar prevent. Well, I guess it didn't if I tick, tick it too damn hard. But you're supposed to be able to do that, and that unlocks the trigger. <clears throat> okay. So that little locking bar goes up in there. You can see it right there. But like any mechanical safety, 
you know, something could happen. Now, before we do anything else, let's tighten that one down. I don't know if you noticed or not, but when I was putting this thing back together, you could definitely see just how much crud had come off the parts. To go back and look at the original video and just how nasty they were versus how clean they were when I put them back together. They were filthy. Okay. Let's cycle it and function test it. All right. Cocks the bolt, the hammer. The fingers, the um, follower, or the um, uh, elevator, whatever you want it, I can't remember what they called it, is rising up to push the cartridge in there. Okay, I do believe we got her. Oh, God. The rest of it ain't just not hard. Magazine tube and all that. So, um, well, I guess we'll do it. Okay, part. I would wipe everything down with a very light coat of oil back here on the rear. Um, then install the rear stock, the butt stock. And uh, then we can work our way up to the magazine and the forearm and the follower and all the other goodies. Now this rust that's on here is pretty damn deep. It's pitted up pretty bad. And I told him that I do not have the capability of re-bluing this, this rifle. Press the tangs together. Big, huge screw. That damn rifle is pulling at it like crazy. Push it through. And then use your screwdriver. And I'll just give up on all that damn continuously looking for a damn different screwdriver size and then snug it down I'm gonna get it mostly snug I'll come back with a bit of the correct bit here in a minute off camera roll it over and I can see it's not even started real well so I'm gonna push it together with my hands the finger lever and the top tang I'm pressing them toward each other and there we go I felt it pull in yep 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 all right that's good and snug and the butt stock is on there and what you're looking for is when the, the screw is protruding right there from up here. You gotta pull that together so I was just gripping it like that. And that was helping pull all that together. Alright, next step magazine follower. It'll be in there unseen, but let us not screw around. Let's wipe it down with a very light coat of very light oil just as a protective measure and let us not out of that area right in there. It was a bad deal. And then just stick it in there. Okay, all we've done so far is we put the magazine follower in there. We put our magazine tube up against that. And it fits in a snug fit. Then you look up here under the dang barrel, you've got a slot cut. On the magazine tube itself, you've got a little bit of a slot cut. Those you should align. Slide your rear barrel band on. Against your forearm, your foregrip. Okay. Actually, I think I've done that, and I should have before I put the front barrel band or the rear barrel band on. No big deal. I just slide that sucker off of there. So slide this. Up there, your magazine tube through it. 
followers in there slide your magazine tube over it ensure that it is seated correctly slide your hand guard there and then look through there to see if you can see where your little alignment tab is easiest way is to look at the front of the magazine and there's a corresponding one here and in the barrel itself that will line, line up And I'll tell you the easiest damn way to make sure where everything stays in alignment while you're doing this next step. Be just take your plug, thread the side up to the top of the magazine tube because the hold is through it. One side's bare, one side's threaded. And if you look at how your screw is made, the threads are in the center of the screw, and then you got a. Uh, um, a nipple on it that goes up into a hole that's drilled into the barrel okay so you just put that on there and align every damn thing and then it makes it so much easier just to get everything and I think I had it turned upside down after all you aggravating bitch And there's a big hole. No, I had it right. There's a big hole and a small hole in the tube itself. The big hole you want to go down, and it will allow the head of the screw to recess in there a little bit. The end of this damn magazine is in such atrocious shape from people grabbing it with sweaty damn dirty hands all right and just start your darn screw a little bit ensure when it comes out the other side that um, it corresponds with the, the slot in the or the hole in the barrel and that right there will give you perfect alignment on every damn thing I should have put that freaking front barrel band on there first, I bet. I'll bet. So, so you get to see my mistakes. I'll leave this one in there. Take the damn screw back out. If I can see the freaking slot. It takes some wiggling and jiggling, I'll just put it to you that way. You got to get the front and back band on. The screw head's going to come off, will be on the uh, right hand side, okay? So you got to make sure that the bigger open hole that has a re recess made into it is will be on the right hand side of the receiver. You push the tube through both of them, and you keep the rear band forward far enough you can you can uh, put your forearm on it, your foregrip, and slide it into the tube. And then before you close it up back here, you want to keep a gap so you can see the um, the magazine follow. Man, that thing is a snug ass fit. I'm not even going to screw with it anymore. It's on there. Now all you got to do is line your slots up. And like I said, before you waste your time on your magazine spring and have tension, Line that number that front screw up here up because the uh, the little peg on the end of it will line up with a slot in the barrel, so it will automatically align. So once you got that, I mean you don't have to snug it; just put it on there. And if you can see right through there, you can see that peg, and it's lining up with the barrel. It's everything snug. Now let me double freaking check that I am not smoking crack. It is, yes it is. So now as long as your holes are forward and back just right, and that rear one is, and we have, we've had the rear screw, but the front screw was missing. I got a brand new one for it. Also, I had thought that this kit would also have the rear screw and I was gonna go ahead and replace it. It did not, but that's okay. It had a lot of other stuff. Alright, it 
that bugger in there. Let's put a bigger bit in there. I do not want this damn thing to jump out more than it already has. It's been a damn pain in the neck. If you're the little cutout on the magazine tube and so forth are not dead on the money, your screw will not go through. Why is this one not? It should be starting. Aggravating SOB. It's going to fight me to the last, you all. Because it is not going in. Just to piss me off. And everything is tight as a damn tick. See if I can see through it all the way. Something is not quite aligned for some damn reason. And that is definitely the screw. And the threads are not boogered up. So I'll put her back in there. Had to press on it. The band. Oh, jeez, I hate those freaking screws. <clears throat> I succeeded in not scratching it until then. Not a very minor scratch on a rusted up gun, but the damn thing is mechanically sound, though cosmetically not superb. Now, same thing applies this front. You got to look through the hole. Make sure everything is in alignment. And it is not. It needs to go forward just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit more. Oh, crap. I bet it more. Whoop. Holding it up in the air. I'm able to see it more better. Now, brand new screw. And again, if the magazine tube in the barrel, the little cutout in either one of them is not lining up, it will not go through. People are bad, and I'm one of them, about picking the rifle up at the end of the barrel. So you had it up against the tree or whatever. I'm going to have to do the same. There we go. Yeah. But anyway, you pick it up by the muzzle. You don't wipe the muzzle down really good when you clean it. And the end is just atrocious. See how pitted up it is? There's really nothing I can do with that. Now we got to take that out, put the magazine spring in it, and we're done. All right. Got to uh, function test it. Unfortunately, I do not own a single... And I've thought about buying them in the past and just didn't. But I don't want any snap caps to safely do this. So uh, we're just going to, have to keep a damn booger hook off the bang switch. First things first, let's see how it loads with the new brass colored loading gate. Perfectly fine. And it doesn't allow them to kick back. Oops. Now, it's been a minute since I loaded these, ladies and gentlemen, so y'all don't give me too much shit. Well, did I let it kick back? It loaded into the chamber just fine. I never liked them brass point sun guns. One. Two. Three. And 
five, I would imagine that's all it'll do. I hope the camera can see this. So I short shocked it one time, didn't eject. But it fed and it extracted and ejected. Perfectly fine. Now I gotta take it out and test fire it. I'm only gonna shoot one time just to make sure that the all the firing pins and stuff are freed up and like they're supposed to be. Alright, I don't know how well the camera gets this. About to feed the cows. Maybe this is the perfect time. One, two, they're in the gun. Fed perfect. There's a dead tree right in front of me. I'm going to shoot it. Basically, where else? Firing pin hit, knocked the hell out of it. My old buddy, old pals, Post 64, 1968, model 94, 3030 from Winchester. Works like a charm.